Ladies and gentlemen, it's Ben Hansen with Ghosts of Morgan City on the Travel Channel. So we've had just an incredible response to some absolutely amazing footage of an alleged ghost that we captured on episode three that I wanted to give you some bonus material so you can see why we're so puzzled by this case. Now there simply just isn't enough time um, when you're filming a show to take all of the analysis, all the footage, and cram it into 42 minutes worth, which is what actually airs. So I hope you enjoy this bonus content. You get a better idea of what we witnessed and you can make up your mind for yourself. So let's jump right into it. Here's the live video footage we captured. So after eating my excellent buffalo wings for dinner, um, I was sitting in the RV by myself reviewing EVP files. I saw this image appear in live time and it's our footage, it's our cameras, so for me at least, it leaves absolutely zero chance that this was CGI or edited in any way. So turn your lights off, here it comes. It was exactly like that, except for the sound effect I just put in for your listening pleasure. So we'll back up the tape a few minutes, I'm going to put the original audio from the camera back on, and here's some brand new footage for you that I'm sure will add a layer to this mystery. So about 40 seconds or so before the ghost walks by, a light goes on in the bedroom to the right. Now at the same time we see movement of someone or something in the mirror on the left hand side in the parlor right here. Okay, now we see that movement again and then the light goes off. Then something with glowing eyes goes along the bottom of the doorway. Ah, hey kitty kitty. And then we capture on two cameras what sounds like to me is an EVP of someone saying something like, I can't breathe. Listen to this. Now mind you, right before the figure walks by, we do hear a thump of some sort. Sarah and I think maybe the cat jumped down from a table to the floor, but the actual figure makes no sounds of footsteps. Now I know what you're thinking because I've been racking my brain thinking the same thing. Why would a ghost need to turn on a light? Can they turn on lights? Absolutely, I think they can because I've seen it before. The area beyond the doorway is pitch black. You're only seeing light in the footage because it's IR light reflected to our camera. But if only we had a second angle of this to see the figure from a different perspective. Hmm, wait for it. Oh, we do! Take a look at this. To the right of the dining room area is the den where we found the old nurse photos of Idlewild on the wall. We set up camera number two in the corner and it faces the dining room through the doorway in the far left. Camera number two, I love you! Notice the figure is transparent. Like the parlor angle, there's no facial features, a semi-transparent flowy dress, and it looks like the figure's carrying a tray or something. So can we chalk up the transparency to motion blur of the camera? Well, it's very different than the solid reflection of light we get coming off of Sarah, who I consider to be a real person, in her walkthrough at the same speed. Now to add icing to this delicious cake, when Sarah and I went back to do an EVP session, the temperature dropped at least 30 degrees Fahrenheit and then we captured this on our audio recorder. Can you let me know if you're still here, please? I'll take that as a moan in the affirmative. So in summary, here's what we did after filming. I went back to the house and figured out how this reflection worked. Using this new thing called science, I found that the mirror on the left captured just a sliver of the reflection of the mirror straight ahead, which in turn captured the movement of the figure in the bedroom on the far right. It was a full-on double mirror reflection all the way. Very beautiful and rare, might I add. I also had Sarah do another test where I matched up the camera perspective to the original. Since there were no height stickers like you would find in the doorway at a 7-Eleven, I had to measure how tall the figure was in comparison to some known objects, like the picture frame in the background. My best estimate is that the figure was 5 foot 2 inches. So I'm absolutely perplexed. I'm befuddled. I mean, if this was a live person, who would it be? We had the whole family clear out of the home. 
There wasn't anyone else who knew we were filming that night. Uh, the rest of the crew was still having dinner on the other side of the property. So the question is, if it's not an apparition, who walks barefoot in the pitch black wearing a semi-transparent uh, gown-looking thing without a face? So I'll let you know if we uncover anything else. Uh, but in the meantime, thank you for watching. And to catch the rest of the season of Ghosts of Morgan City, you can tune into the Travel Channel on Friday nights. Stay classy, Morgan City.